Fight we'll gather from the plains, shouting the battle cry of freedom. The Union forever, hurrah, boy, hurrah. In the summer of 1863, the American Civil War was now in its third tragic year. In reply to recent Union strategic progress in the Western Theater and strategic stalemate in the more politically visible Eastern Theater, Army of Northern Virginia Commanding General Robert E. Lee capitalizing on a string of recent Confederate victories at Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville convinced Confederate President Jefferson Davis to allow him to once again invade Union soil in an attempt to lure the Army of the Potomac into battle and destroy it. The idea being that a powerful Confederate victory on Union soil would again take the pressure off of war-torn Virginia countryside, undermine the U.S. citizenry's resolve to continue the conflict, and perhaps garner some measure of foreign intervention in favor of the Confederacy. A total of 93,921 Union and 71,699 Confederate forces engaged at the Pennsylvania crossroads town of Gettysburg in what would become the largest and most costly multi-day battle of the American Civil War and the largest land battle ever fought on the North American continent. Of the total men engaged in three days of fighting, 51,112 would become casualties, 23,049 for the Union, 28,063 for the Confederacy. From July 1st through July 3rd, the Union Army of the Potomac, under the new leadership of Major General George G. Meade, fought the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia. Day one of the fighting saw Union cavalry forces under Brigadier General John Buford fight a successful delaying action that bought just enough time for Union infantry to arrive and slow the powerful and deliberate Confederate advance from the west and north into Gettysburg. The defensive fight by the Union 1st and 9th Corps enabled follow-on Union forces approaching from the south and east to fully occupy the commanding high ground south of the town atop Culp's Hill, Cemetery Hill, and Cemetery Ridge to form a formidable defensive line. Day two of the fighting entailed the Army of Northern Virginia, arrayed in a line along Seminary Ridge parallel to the Union line, attacking the left and right flanks of the formidable Union position along Cemetery Ridge. Confederate attacks on the Union right flank against Culp's Hill and Cemetery Hill failed in the face of formidable, well-engineered Union defensive positions and artillery fires. On the Union left flank, the fighting was equally intense and more dynamic as gaps in the Union defensive line at Little Round Top, the Devil's Den, and the Wheatfield were filled just in time to oppose and thwart the powerful Confederate onslaught. Leaders like Colonel Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain of the 20th Maine Volunteer Infantry skillfully applied their tactics, resisting and overcoming repeated Confederate attacks on his position on the southern spur of Little Round Top. With Chamberlain's efforts culminating in a desperate bayonet charge, coupled with a timely attack by his designated flank guard company, Company B, that finally routed the Confederate attackers. Chamberlain's actions that day helped save the Union left flank from collapse and earned him the Congressional Medal of Honor, while his 20th Maine Regiment of Volunteer Infantry earned historic immortality. Day three of the fighting saw a repeat of Confederate efforts to assault the flanks. However, Union forces on the left flank at Culp's Hill seized the initiative, opening fire on Confederate positions before the Confederates could launch their attack. On the Confederate right flank, Lieutenant General James Longstreet's forces were not executing as planned, as Longstreet and Lee aired differing opinions on the utility of attacking from their current positions. Lee abandoned the flank attacks in favor of a direct frontal assault against the center of the Union line atop Cemetery Ridge. He felt that the Union forces had reinforced on the flanks and would be correspondingly weak in the center of their line. Lee would send in Major General George Pickett's understrength division, along with two divisions from an adjacent corps, to attack the Union center. Over his own protests to Lee, Longstreet commanded this ill-fated attack, which required Confederate forces to close in on the Union line after advancing nearly a mile over open ground while receiving the decimating effects of long- and then short-range artillery and eventually rifled musket volley fires from the Union defensive lines. Pickett's charge broke into the Union lines briefly, but was summarily repulsed. While Lee prepared for a Union counterattack, it never came. On July 4th, Lee and his forces began their retreat from Gettysburg. 
While the Union Army of the Potomac had won a solid tactical victory, Lee's army escaped into Virginia, and the war would go on for two more bloody years. Still, never again would Confederate forces invade northern soil or conduct offensive operations on such a major scale. And coupled with another critical Union victory in the West at Vicksburg on July 4th, the Battle of Gettysburg marked the turning of the tide of the American Civil War in favor of the Union cause.